All right, chemistry is the study of basically everything. Um, so it's going to be the study of matter. So anything that has um, mass and takes up volume is considered matter. And chemistry is the study of that matter. So because of that, I say chemistry is really the study of everything. Um, matter can be naturally occurring, things like cotton, sand, um, even things like digoxin, which is like a common cardiac drug. Um, it's actually purified uh, from some plants. And there's also human... Um, man-made things like styrofoam and nylon and kind of listed here is another drug ibuprofen right this is like advil something like that so you don't find that growing on a tree but that chemical can be synthesized from scratch and made and can be useful so matter can uh really transcend a lot of different uh types of uh products that are out there in the world um Okay, so you guys have all heard of this before, but let's go over it briefly here. So there's matter comes in three forms, solid, liquid, and gases. Um, solids have a fixed volume. Uh, they maintain its shape regardless of the container. So that means if you were to take like a, a baseball and you put it in a, a bowl, the baseball does not change shape, right? It's a solid. Um, anything that's a solid has particles that lie close together. Um, so if you look at this picture down here on the bottom, right, so down here in this uh, picture, you can see all of the particles, right, being really close to each other in kind of a fixed, um, a fixed array. So they're kind of held together closely by interactions that hold them, hold them together. Now, a liquid also has a definite volume, right? We measure liquids whenever you think of volume. A lot of times you think of a liquid like a 500 uh, milliliter bottle of water or something like that, or a gallon of milk, right? Those are volumes. And liquids take the shape of its container. So if you pour milk from a, a gallon jug into a cup, um, it, the, it changes its shape. So it changes its shape to fit the container. Um, for a liquid, it has particles that are still pretty close together, but they can randomly move around. That allows it to change its shape. So if you look at the particles um, at the bottom of this slide, uh, you can notice that they are not as fixed, they're not as rigid, um, and they can kind of move and slide uh, more than they could in a solid. All right, and the last state of matter is gas. So gases have no definite shape or volume. So if you imagine like if you're in a room and you open a door, the gas whooshes out of that room. Um, and it's basically going to expand to fill whatever volume it can. And it's going to assume the shape of whatever container it's put in. So it's similar to a liquid in that way. But the idea here is a gas is going to expand as much as it can. So these particles are far apart. They move around randomly. And in the end, we just say gas has no definite shape or volume because of that. And we'll talk more about um, particularly liquids and gases later on in the semester um, and talk in more depth about those properties. But this is just kind of an introduction getting you to think of the various um, states of matter here. Okay, so when talking about states of matter, we can refer to chemical properties and physical properties. So we're going to start off talking about physical properties. So physical properties are uh, properties of a chemical or of matter that can be observed or measured without changing the composition. So the example I tend to give is uh, water. So whenever we have water you think of something that's a liquid, probably. That's what I think of. So you can also have ice, but ice is still technically water, and that's going to be a solid. And then you also have uh, vapor, which is still technically water, like a lot of times we would call it water vapor, and that's a gas. So in all three of these things here, we're still looking at water. And in all of those cases, water is going to be H2O. We'll look more at chemical formulas later, but I'm sure you guys have all heard of water being H2O. So whether it's in a solid, liquid, or gas, we don't change this H2O. It stays exactly the same. So whether it's ice, whether it's water, whether it's vapor, it's always going to be H2O. So physical properties of water would include, for instance, its boiling point, its melting point, its solubility, its color, its odor, 
Um, so these are all things that aren't going to change within H2O. Now, the boiling point of water is going to be 100 degrees Celsius, and that's when it's going to go from a liquid to a gas, right? You make this conversion here. Um, the melting point of water is when it goes from a solid to a liquid, right? The solubility refers to whether or not water is going to be able to dissolve in another liquid. Usually when we talk about solubility, we talk about solids, like um, a salt. Is a salt soluble in water, or is a salt soluble in different liquids? Um, a color, odor. So again, these are all things that aren't going to change uh, whether you heat something up or cool it down. So in other words, the solid form and the gas form are still going to have, for instance, maybe the same odor or color. A lot of gases are colored. All right, so physical properties can be observed without changing the composition of the material. Again, when we talk about composition, we're referring to not changing the chemical formula at all. All right, so this is the example I just went through. Um, so I'm not going to spend more time talking about this. This is just kind of another slide uh, showing the same thing. But again, you can see kind of in pictures here going from solid and liquid to gas. And the idea of physical changes being these um, transitions from solid to liquid and liquid to gas. All right, so chemical properties determine how a substance can be converted from one thing into another. So if you look at the reaction shown on the bottom, you have oxygen, which is going to be this O2 molecule right here. That's kind of two oxygens squ uh, squished together. Um, down here is H2, so these are two hydrogens squished together. Then these are both gases, and they eventually kind of uh, collide with each other and what can happen is you can undergo a chemical reaction where you come over here now and you're going to form water which is going to be H2O. So two of the gray circles and one of the red circles. So you're basically breaking bonds over here and making new bonds over here and that's going to be what we refer to as a chemical reaction or a chemical change. That's converting one substance into another. You're converting O2 and you're converting H2 into H2O. So it's different chemicals here. Um, you can see some other examples of these chemical changes on the slide. So like a apple, whenever you eat it, right, whenever your body digests it, it doesn't stay an apple anymore. You convert that and you metabolize it to energy. All right, so in terms of looking at the classification of matter, so this is kind of a... Um, a good slide to kind of confirm you have the right vocabulary talking about everything. So matter is going to be anything with mass in that has a volume. So from matter we can, can we can consider all matter is either going to be a pure substance or a mixture. All right. Um, primarily in class we're going to talk about pure substances for most of the course, um, or at least yeah for most of the course that's a fair thing. So a pure substance. So a pure substance can either be an element or a compound. So an element is going to be the things that are on the periodic table of elements, and we're going to talk about that in Chapter 2. We're going to talk about the periodic table. Um, and a compound is when you have two or more elements coming together. And we've actually already talked about um, a compound when we talked about water, right? H2 and O. That means you have hydrogen and oxygen together to make a compound. So for instance... Hydrogen itself would be an element. Oxygen itself would be an element. A compound is when you have H2O and you have uh, two or more elements coming together. Now, these are all considered pure substances. Now, a mixture is when you have more than one component together. And we will talk about mixtures some whenever we talk about uh, solutions um, primarily. So a couple examples of a mixture, just think of the air we breathe. Um, right, the air we breathe has oxygen and nitrogen and carbon dioxide and water, right? So there's a whole lot of different gases in the air we breathe. Um, if you were to think of, say, uh, a solution of Coca-Cola, right? So you have a can of Coke, right? In there you have water and you have sugar and you have a whole bunch of other things in there as well. That's a mixture. Um, most of the things that we encounter in our day-to-day -day lives are going to be mixtures. Um, 
However, chemically, whenever we observe things, it makes it much less complicated if we look at the pure substances, right? So we don't kind of have to be pulled in by what different components of a, of a mixture might be doing. All right, so a pure substance composed of a single component, and it's going to have a constant composition. So regardless of the size of the sample or where the, it came from, it's going to have a constant composition. Um, a pure substance cannot be broken down to other pure substances by a physical change. Again, whenever you hear or see this term physical change, you should be thinking um, heating or cooling, right? So heating or cooling are going to be your main examples of a physical change. So if you look at the bottom down here, you have sugar. So this is going to be table sugar. And then the, over here is going to be water. Um, you can heat these, you can cool them as much as you want, and yes, they might turn from a liquid to a solid, or from a liquid to a gas, or a solid to a gas, or whatever the case might be, um, but they're still going to be the same chemical composition, um, and that's what we mean by a pure substance. In other words, if you take sugar down here, and you were to heat it up really, 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 really hot, um, you could eventually dissolve sugar. It doesn't happen easily, but you can eventually do it. If you were to melt the sugar, it's still going to stay as, stay as C12, H22, O11. It doesn't break down into anything uh, more simple than that. So that's, again, what we mean by a pure substance. Um, element versus compound. So an element can't be broken down by a, fit, by a chemical change. Um, so an element... Again, an easier definition than kind of these words, which are still true, is just say an element are going to be the things on the periodic table. So if you look at your periodic table of elements, which is in your textbook or you can find online easily, and we'll talk about it in much more detail in the next chapter, um, those are all elements on there. And then a compound is whenever you combine two or more elements. So down here you have uh, sodium chloride, NaCl. So if you have NaCl and you kind of look, you can see the sodiums, the Na's in gray, and then the Cl's in green. So you have two different elements that make up that compound. All right, and now a mixture is when you have more than one compound. So sugar dissolved in water is an example of that because you have two different things there. You have water and you have sugar. Um, so this is going to be composed of more than one component. And you can have any combination of solid, liquid, or gases. On um, the example I gave earlier of a can of Coke, right, you also have, right, that's carbonated water. So you're going to have gas, right, dissolved inside of that liquid as well. Um, you can separate the components of a mixture into the individual pieces. Um, and this is actually a lab that our general chemistry students do uh, at UT, right? They'll take a mixture and they'll separate it. So in other words, you could imagine if you had sugar and water. So if you had this mixture that is shown down here where you have sugar dissolved in water, if you were to heat that and boil it and boil it and boil it, eventually all the water would evaporate. Well, the sugar has a different uh, boiling point, so the sugar isn't going to convert into a gas as easily as the water will. So if you heat it to, and boil the solution, eventually all the water will evaporate and you'll be left behind with the sugar in whatever the original container was. So in that way, you could separate those two components of that mixture.